Hello? Is this thing on? Welcome to demo of SAS Mapper for the Duke Oceans Engineering Project. Uh, my name is Ryan, I'll be your host for the evening, and I will be going over the angle interferometry and the data co-registration part of the code. Don't worry, they're just big words, not really that complicated, um, and pretty straightforward. So, let's get started. So if you start off in the SAS mapper code, um, that is kind of the big machine that is gonna do all the SAS sonar stuff. Like you really don't need to know exactly how that works, just to know where the inputs are. Worst case, call up a grad student, they'll help explain things. Um, but our job is just kind of get the inputs, get the thing running. So where we're gonna focus is here on line 83, we have angles is equal to angle interferometry and notice it's taking three inputs, data one, data two, data three. That's because we are using three receivers for this Ocean's XPRIZE setup. And what the angle interferometry is, is it takes three radial distances. So data one, data two, data three. That is defined relative to each receiver. And using those three radial distances, we'll be able to determine the angle of where the data is located. So. Now let's go into angle interferometry. And this is the part that uh, Brendan kind of mapped out. Let's pull up the MATLAB. Yes, so in angle interferometry, we are sending in our lists of radial data uh, because the way the SAS works is we're getting back just list of like radial points because it's gonna send out a signal and measure how long for that signal to come back and all the mapper is going to know is, hey, this point is at X distance away from the receiver. Doesn't know the time, doesn't really know the angle, just the radial distance. That's what angle interferometry is for, is to figure out that angle. Um, so before we can even do all the fancy math of figuring out what the angle is, which is located down there, we have to co-register it. So what co-registration is, it's essentially guessing which radial points match up with each other because there's so many like radial points coming into the mapper at each time because it's think about it sending out a circle pulse from the receiver and it's getting radial data from all different directions there's a lot of data coming in so before we can even do processing we have to figure out which radial points kind of match up with each other and that's kind of what co-registration is at, at a basis so in co-registration, we are running what you can call a fancy guess function. If you Google co-registration, that's pretty much all it is. It's just educated guessing um, to guess what points kind of match up with each other. So at the basis of the code, we are looping through, we're looping through one of the lists and trying to co-register co it with another. Um, before we even try to do all three at one time, we're just doing both to R1. Um, and in order to kind of limit the possibilities of which point match up with, you, with each other, we are using a min val, max val, which is defined by the length that the receivers are apart. Um, because, for example, if there is a point all the way out to your right, and then you have receiver one, is in a straight line at that point, and then L distance away, there's receiver two. So if we look up, let me see if I can draw that in the comments. Exciting, so like, oh, what's percent sign? We're not using Java. R1, this is distance L, R2, and then all the way out here, is the point. So if we were getting this a signal from this direction, this would be R2, for example, the radial distance to receiver two, and then this would be R1. And this is an absolute maximum difference between the two because it's L. Because if the point was up here, which is kind of hard to do within MATLAB, the distance between R1 and R2 would be less than the maximum. So that's kind of what this filtering is going on here, is just limiting the possibilities of like what point matches with each other. So 
once we do that like bare minimum kind of filtering we come up with these possible pairings like which pairings are mathematically possible and this is kind of where the work for the semester kind of teeters out uh, we were able to set up this code we kind of streamlined it modularized it and all we gotta all we have left to do where the whoever's taking this project up in spring 2019 which I think is actually me um, <laughs> you have to figure out the guess function. So what the guess function is, we created this kind of MATLAB function that will allow you to kind of research like what's the best way to kind of guess which pairing goes with which. And we have a lot of ideas for how to do this. I mean, currently we just have like a random data generator, which doesn't really work that well. Um, but we're considering matching up based off of like radial, uh, previous radial data because in theory if you're sending out a circular pulse that means that you are getting data from every single direction uh, but that is something we'll play with next semester if we look at the guess function where's the guess function do, 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 do. so the guess function right here to our right it takes in a list of the possible pairings um, I guess the index of R that we are kind of like checking with um, R1 and R2 which are radial data and what it returns is it returns the index from possible pairings that we want to match back in R1, R2 because essentially the output of the co-registering data is right here the labels where it's where the index of R1 well index of labels is represents the value in R1 and J represents the value in R2 uh, this is gonna take like a while just kind of read through the code um, after a while you kind of get it like a feel for this um, but it shouldn't be too complicated so anyway once you kind of like your pickup point would be figuring out this guess function and then a way you can kind of test the accuracy of this is we wrote a data sim function, which simulates a scenario that the pod might be in based off of the X1, uh, X2 location of one of the receivers, Y1, wait, <laughs> X1, Y1 of receiver one, X2, Y2 of receiver two. And that will calculate the length between them automatically, so don't worry about that. And then it'll, it'll put it on all the points in the co-registration function and then compare it for accuracy. Right now we are very inaccurate, if you can tell. We have only one count working. Um, but that is your problem. When, it should be too hard to figure out. So back to angle interferometry. Once we get those points in, lined up in theory, we give it our best guess, and then we pass it on to someone else. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, whatever else you can do on YouTube. Share, message in the Discord, please. Y'all have a great day.